The Real Flow menu contains the following entries. You typically start with an emitter to determine where the fluid particles will be created. This action creates a scene tree and a fluid container. Emitters define the point of particle creation in 3D space while the particles are part of the fluid container. Emitters can be scaled, rotated, and translated like objects. An arrow indicates the direction of emission. A simulation is triggered with a click on play button in the timeline. Real flow fluids are capable of interacting with objects. Right click on the appropriate object, open Real flow tags, and choose collider tag. It is possible to group several objects and attach the collider tag to the group. A demon, for example, gravity, is a helper object. Most demons introduce forces for accelerating and influencing the particles. Some are used to delete unwanted particles. Other demons are used to fill holes between the particles or filter them, for example for the creation of foam. Realflow is able to read an object's UVW coordinates for applying textures or creating wet-dry maps. Create a material and select any channel with image support, except normal. From texture, choose Realflow wet map. Attach the material to the object. You have to assign a collider tag to the object you want to make wet. Don't forget to make it editable. To see the maps at simulation time, go to the Materials Editor tab and enable Animate Preview. When a particle simulation is being rendered, you will not see anything because the particles are nothing more than position indicators. You can group some objects under the fluid container. If you want to see the objects at simulation time, go to Fluid, Open Particles tab, and Disable Render Only. Be aware that disabling this option might increase simulation time. Meshing is the process of turning a particle cloud into a solid object. Although meshing requires a little experience to get a feeling for how the parameters play together, there is a simple rule of thumb. The more particles, the better the mesh. Bear in mind that the simulation is not saved unless you cache it. Go to Scene, open Cache tab, and specify a folder where the files will be stored. Click on Create Cached. A progress bar appears. Once the simulation is finished, the Use Cache checkbox will be enabled, and you can scrub the timeline to see the results. We will examine all details in future tutorials, and you will be able to achieve high-end simulations with an even easier workflow. Like and subscribe if you learned something new. And thanks for watching.